Today, we're diving into the world of One Piece to talk about the wielders of Conqueror's Hockey, ranking the top 18 strongest users of this rare ability. Conqueror's Hockey is something you could call one in a million, or maybe even rarer than that. As we venture into the New World arc, we're introduced to characters with this game-changing power, one after another. But the real question is, who's the strongest among them? Buckle up, because we've got some surprising insights to share. If you disagree with the rankings or have your own thoughts, don't hold back. Let me know in the comments. If any of your favorite characters or theories make the list, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. One thing to note, though, this video does include spoilers for One Piece, so consider yourselves warned. All right, let's jump right in. Given that Kato, one of the four emperors, is their parent, this character shows signs of greatness from an early age. The first time Yamato used Conqueror's Hockey was in childhood. He called himself Odin, and during his week-long rampage, he unintentionally released his Conqueror's Hockey, knocking out Kato's followers. However, we don't see Yamato consciously using it after that. It's quite a talent to be able to stun Kato's underlings at such a young age. While Yamato's power is impressive, it doesn't seem like he can consciously control Conqueror's Hockey, which is why I've placed him in this rank. Next, we have the captain of the Kuja Pirates, known as the Pirate Empress, Boa Hancock. During the Summit War, she stopped Smoker in his tracks to protect Luffy. And in the latest chapters, she's been turning Blackbeard's invading crew into stone. Her power is truly something else. After the abolition of the Seven Warlords system, her bounty skyrocketed to a whopping 1.659 billion berries. As expected of a former Warlord of the Sea, the bounty is outrageous. Turns out, Hancock is also a user of the Conqueror's Hockey. When Luffy unconsciously released his hockey in Amazon Lily, she said, the same as me, he has the Conqueror's Hockey. From this statement, it's clear that Hancock can control her hockey to some extent. We haven't seen her use it because her devil fruit powers are so overpowering. But considering her former status as a warlord and her ability to control her Conqueror's Hockey at will, we've placed her at this rank. Ace. Second Division Commander of the Whitebeard Pirates and true son of the Pirate King Gold Roger also possessed Conqueror's Hockey, just like his father. But it seems like he couldn't control it at will, huh? The only time Ace used Conqueror's Hockey in the series was unconscious, as a kid, to save Luffy from Blue Jam's underlings. After that, because he lost his life in the Summit War, there were no more chances to show off any hockey, like Conqueror or Observation. The fact that we never see him use hockey often leads to his power being underrated online. Makes you wonder if he really did inherit the devil's blood. Zoro, once a pirate hunter, is now the right-hand man of the four emperors. After two years of training, Zoro gained armament and observation hockey. However, he did not seem to have mastered only the conqueror's hockey, and he used the other two hockey in battle on Fishman's Island and Dressrosa. However, finally, in his battle against King, an executive of the Beast Pirates, Zoro awakened Conqueror's Hockey. The method was to handle Odin's sword Enma and constantly release the maximum amount of hockey. He even knocked out some nearby mob pirates of the Beast Pirates. Though Zoro himself didn't seem aware of it, even though they were just mob pirates, the fact he knocked out New World Pirates shows his formidable spirit. He is still unable to control it well, but he has developed a new attack with Conqueror's Hockey, King of Hell Three Sword Dragon. He successfully defeated one of the four Emperor's executives, hence his place on the list. We're eagerly looking forward to Zoro's future battles with his Three Sword Style Dragon. Xin Zhao, the former leader of the Hapo Navy, was an active pirate on the front lines during the era when Roger and Garp were at their peak. Xin Zhao's specialty, Drill Dragon Nail, is so strong it can split a massive chunk of ice. Probably the hardest head in the series. Xin Zhao was a possessor of Conqueror's Hockey 2. In the Colosseum in Dressrosa, he used his hockey to knock out several participants. He seems to be able to control Conqueror's Hockey, of course. When he exchanged fists with Luffy, a clash of Conqueror's Hockey occurred, and a loud crash impact noise reverberated throughout the Colosseum. Though he seems to have declined due to aging, his strength in his prime must have been remarkable. He could even brawl with Garp back in the day. Don Quixote de Flamingo, a former member of the Seven Warlords of the Sea, was originally a member of the Celestial Dragons, but lost his status due to his father's intentions. 
and he has a tragic past of being persecuted by the people due to his former status as a celestial dragons. That poor guy. In his rage, Doflamingo first awakened Conqueror's Hockey, causing all the persecuting people to faint. Now, he controls his Conqueror's Hockey at will. On Punk Hazard, he knocked out the G5 Marines with his Conqueror's Hockey. In his battle with Luffy and Dressrosa, there was a clash of Conqueror's Hockey, causing not only a loud crash noise, but also tremendous wind pressure. It's always thrilling to see the power of a Conqueror's Hockey clash. After losing to Luffy, Doflamingo was imprisoned in Impel Down. But we occasionally get glimpses of his prison life, so we might see more of Doflamingo's actions in the near future. Keep going, 41-year-old guy. He is the captain of the King Pirates. Since his debut at Sabati Archipelago, Kid did not have a significant role in the New World arc. However, upon his emergence in Wano Country, it was revealed from Kato that he possessed the qualities of Conqueror's Hockey. I wonder if Kid can also wield Conqueror's Hockey. In the battle against Big Mom, there is no depiction of him using Conqueror's Hockey. More importantly, the information that he possesses Conqueror's Hockey comes from Kato. Therefore, it's not clear yet whether Kid is aware of this power or if he can control his hockey. There are still many mysteries, but considering his whopping bounty of 3 billion berries and his strength to defeat Big Mom, one of the four emperors, his hockey must be substantial. According to Riley, Conqueror's hockey represents the spirit of the user itself. He is the number two of the Big Mom Pirates. Charlotte Katakuri is known for his sophisticated observation hockey, which allows him to see the future, and his top-level armament hockey among the four emperor's executives. However, he is also a perfect human being who possesses Conqueror's hockey. During his fight with Luffy at Whole Cake Island, he made his allies and his sister, Charlotte Flamp, faint with his Conqueror's hockey. Furthermore, he caused a clash of Conqueror's hockey without even trading blows, once again rocking the scene. Unfortunately, there was no depiction of Katakuri's awakening his Conqueror's hockey. But being Big Mom's son, he has a rare combat sense. This suggests that he might have learned to use Conqueror's Hockey at a very early stage. It seems like relatives of the Four Emperors generally possess Conqueror's Hockey. Katakuri's future appearances are quite uncertain since his mother, Big Mom, was defeated by Kid and Law, and he himself was by Luffy. However, considering his popularity, I hope he reappears and takes on a more active role. If anyone can make a thrilling comeback, it's Oda Sensei. From the Navy's side, here's the first ranking. Former Fleet Admiral Sengoku, known as the Buddha, was also able to use Conqueror's Hockey. He retired from the front lines in his position as Fleet Admiral after the Summit War and currently serves as an Inspector General in the Navy headquarters. In his prime, he was a hero who defended world peace against the Roger Pirates and the Whitebeard Pirates. There's no depiction or information of Sengoku using Conqueror's Hockey in the story. However, the One Piece official fan book, Viva Card, revealed that he possesses Conqueror's Hockey. He's not just a cheerful, good-natured old man. Perhaps in a future flashback scene, we'll see a cool depiction of Sengoku sweeping away pirates with his hockey. He's an original character from the movie Stampede. Bullet was a member of the Roger Pirates and was feared as the successor of the demon. Born in a war-torn country, he spent his youth as a child soldier. However, being destroyed by his superiors, he destroyed his own country alone and set out for the sea. I know this situation regarding his departure is terrible. After becoming a pirate, he experienced his first defeat in a battle against the future pirate king, Gal D. Roger. So, he joined the Roger Pirates to surpass Roger. Roger was indeed incredibly strong. After Roger was executed, Bullet went on a rampage out of a sense of loss for losing his goal. As the Navy used a buster call to capture Bullet, he was subsequently imprisoned in level 6 of Impel Down. He escaped during Blackbeard's attack on Impel Down, leading to the events of the movie. During his fight against Luffy and the others, he emitted powerful Conqueror's Hockey, making the mob characters faint as usual. In the clash of Conqueror's Hockey with Luffy, he caused something like a small explosion. At that point, Bullet's Conqueror Hockey appeared bigger and stronger than the Conqueror's Hockey emitted by Luffy. Odin, a samurai from Wano Country, is also a user of the Conqueror's Hockey, but surprisingly, this has never been depicted. The phrase, Odin's Technique, by Ashura Doji, 
also known as Shudemaru, after witnessing Luffy's Conqueror's hockey, is confirmed that Odin possessed this power. It wouldn't be strange if someone of Odin's caliber possessed Conqueror's hockey, once he even served on the ships of Whitebeard and Roger, acting as the captain of the second division on Whitebeard's ship. He even managed to leave a scar on Kato, known as the strongest creature in the world, which indicates Odin's remarkable strength. I wish I could have seen him using the Conqueror's hockey. Now that the Wano Country arc has concluded, it seems difficult for Odin's Conqueror's hockey to be revealed. However, when we observe characters with Conqueror's hockey, it appears that this ability might be inherited. So, Odin's son, Momonosuke, might demonstrate the Kazuki family's Conqueror's hockey instead of Odin. You'd be so excited to see that kind of story, wouldn't you? Finally, we have the introduction of someone on the level of the Four Emperors. Big Mom, who had been renowned as one of the Four Emperors until her defeat at the hands of Law and Kid in Wano Country, naturally possesses Conqueror's hockey. Ordinary people would faint due to the overpowering nature of her hockey. Her ferocious appearance surpasses even the fearsome mountain witches of Japanese folktales. The problematic part about Big Mom is that if a picture of Mother Carmel, which she cherishes dearly, is damaged, she goes into a mental breakdown and runs amok. Not only that, but she unconsciously releases her Conqueror's hockey. When she crossed fists with Kato, another former emperor, there was a clash of Conqueror's hockey, and the sky over Onigashima was split in two. Additionally, when Big Mom was battling Law and Kid, two of the worst generation in Onigashima, her Conqueror's hockey was so overwhelming that it knocked out many soldiers on the same floor. If you confront her, you would surely lose your life. As a result, Big Mom was defeated by Law and Kid, and her current status is unknown. She's been demoted from the rank of the four emperors, but will we ever see Big Mom's Conqueror's hockey again? I still want to see a one-on-one -on -one fight with Luffy. Ranking sixth in terms of strength among the Kato, it just shows how powerful the members on this list are. Kato has stated, only hockey can surpass everything. He's one of the strongest characters in the series, having honed his armament hockey, observation hockey, and conqueror's hockey to the top level. He is capable of future sight through observation hockey, and even sensed Odin's present from Zoro's Enma. In terms of armament hockey, his hockey is so powerful that it nullified the shambles of law, a Paramecia devil fruit user. He indeed overwhelmed Luffy and his crew without using his devil fruit power, relying solely on his hockey. What's even more frightening is that Kato is able to possess Conqueror's hockey. After swinging his club, which is wrapped in both armament hockey and Conqueror's hockey, and releasing black lightning in the air, he smashes his opponents into the ground. The power of Thunder Bagao is immense, and even made Luffy, who is incredibly tough, lose consciousness for a while. Of course, if his opponent is on the same level, a clash of Conqueror's hockey can split the sky. It's no surprise that he is hailed as the strongest creature in the world in a former emperor. But don't worry, after being defeated by Luffy, who learned how to use Conqueror's hockey coding, he temporarily retreated from the main stage, so it seems we won't have to see his scary face anymore. After mastering Conqueror's hockey, he has become so skilled that he is able to defeat powerful opponents who are beyond the understanding of this world, such as Don Quixote de Flamingo of the Seven Warlords of the Sea, Charlotte Katakuri, a high-ranking member of the Four Emperors. There are also others such as Douglas Bullet, a former member of the Rogers Pirate Crew, and Kato, the strongest of the Four Emperors. Naturally, taking into consideration the control of Conqueror's hockey and the mastery of embodying it, I've ranked them accordingly. Luffy showed the first glimpse of Conqueror's hockey when he confronted Motobaro, the beloved bison of Duval, leader of the Rosy Life Riders. Surprisingly, it was early in his journey. At that time, he unconsciously overpowered Motobaro and knocked him out. Motobaro's wild instinct probably kicked in. He also knocked out female warriors in Amazon Lily with his Conqueror's Hockey. In the Summit War, he showed Conqueror's Hockey multiple times, such as when he was trying to save Ace. After two years of training, he finally mastered Observation, Armament, and Conqueror's Hockey. During the Fishman Island arc, he showed off his Conqueror's Hockey against 100,000 people, knocking out 50,000 of them with just his hockey. It's my favorite Conqueror's Hockey scene. Since then, 
he has learned to embody himself with Conqueror's Hockey, a technique that only a handful of powerful people possessing Conqueror's Hockey can master. Luffy, with Conqueror's Hockey, finally split the sky in the battle against Kato. I can't stop getting goosebumps. We can't take our eyes off of Luffy's future performances, as he now possesses the power to split the sky with his Conqueror's Hockey. Who will he challenge next? One of the four emperors, captain of the red-haired pirates, the man himself, red-haired Shanks, is well known for his conqueror's hockey. In the series, when he boarded Whitebeard's ship, another one of the four emperors, he unleashed his hockey as an intimidation tactic, causing several young Whitebeard pirate members to faint. Keep in mind, there was no ordinary crew members. They belonged to one of the four emperors' crews. At Shanks' level, it's almost as if his hockey is walking on its own. In the movie film Red, he released his Conqueror's Hockey in fury against the Navy who came to seize Uta. It didn't stop with just the mob Navy soldiers. He made Vice Admiral Mamanga kneel, forced Admiral Fujitora to sheath his sword, and even made Admiral Kizaru break into a cold sweat. The level of hockey that makes a Vice Admiral unable to stand is extremely high. Furthermore, his act toward the end of the Wano Country arc was also spectacular. Against the Marine Admirals who came to take the heads of Luffy and his comrades after the battle, he unleashed a mighty hockey from the waters near Wano Country, forcing them to retreat. The level of hockey makes all three current Admirals nervous. Also in Elbaf, where Shanks is currently staying, he showed off his Conqueror's hockey-wrapped God Avoidance Slash against Kid and KO'd him with a single shot. That's too powerful. As a bonus, he made the mob members of the Kid Pirates faint due to the aftermath of his Conqueror's Hockey. Shanks may be the strongest in this series right now. Silver's Rayleigh, the former Vice President of the Roger Pirates, is the very person who taught Luffy about hockey. He first appeared in the human shop in the Sabaody Archipelago. It was thought that he was a pitiful old man who was sold off as a slave in an auction. But as soon as he revealed himself in front of Luffy as the right-hand man of Pirate King Gold D. Roger, he let out his conqueror's hockey. As a result, most of the people in the venue fainted. Definitely the number one appearance scene of all stories. Two years ago, he had the spirit to make a giant elephant, which was questionable whether Luffy could match, faint with just his hockey. His strength proved himself worthy of being the Pirate King's right-hand man. There was a possibility that Luffy could have been done in by his hockey two years ago. In the SBS, it was written that if it were Rayleigh, he could have made 100,000 people faint with his Conqueror's Hockey, double the number Luffy did in Fishman Island. I can't believe he's in third place. What's surprising is that Rayleigh is a 78-year-old man, and he says his body doesn't move as he wants it to. Judging from the fact that his hockey was much more powerful in his prime, I ranked him higher than Kato, Big Mom, and Luffy. I want to see Rayleigh's Conqueror Hockey at its best in his prime. The world's strongest pirate, famous as Whitebeard. Whitebeard, who was no longer with us, was as powerful as Roger in his prime. The world's two strongest people wrapped in Conqueror's hockey. When they crossed swords, explosions occurred. Huge trees were about to fall. Lands split apart. Rocks sprang up, causing disaster-level damage. Whitebeard in his prime was terrifying. Even so, when he was old and sick, just a casual clash of swords with Shanks split the sky. He certainly lived up to the name of the world's strongest pirate. He was a character too precious to lose. In the latest chapter, Edward Weevil, who calls himself Whitebeard's son, appears. Perhaps we'll see a flashback of a younger Whitebeard showing off his monstrous hockey once again. I want to see Roger and Whitebeard fight over and over again. The undisputed number one pirate king, both in name and in reality. Roger, who conquered the Grand Line 25 years ago and became known as the Pirate King, is truly a man worthy of possessing the qualities of a king. As expected, he is a possessor of the Conqueror's Hockey. However, sadly, the only time Roger demonstrated his Conqueror's Hockey in the series was before he became known as the Pirate King when he confronted Whitebeard. As I mentioned earlier, the clash of the two Conqueror's Hockey was tremendous. It's definitely not enough, right? Still, there are many mysteries and few appearances. On the contrary, he may appear in the future in a reminiscence and show off his extraordinary fighting and hockey that will excite readers greatly, you know? Mr. Oda, we believe in you.